Hello and welcome back to my instructional video series on making dichroic jewelry. I'm covering earrings, pendants, etching, barrettes, etc. And a lot of these techniques can be expanded into larger projects that are, you know, bigger than the size of jewelry. Anyways, let's get on with it. Alright, so here's my trilobite fossil and it's a very, very thin uh, impression. So it's, it's actually perfect to make into dichroic jewelry because it doesn't have a huge amount of surface relief. And I'm, I've got a little pad of plasticine here. I need to transfer the image from a positive into a negative in the plasticine. So I'm just going to press it on top. and peel it off. And there's my image. Now I am going to have to clean it up a little bit because there's little areas around the image that I I don't want to distract from the image. So I'm going to smooth those out. Okay, now it's a little bit less distracting with no background and I've cut this piece of plastic and taped it up in the correct diameter for my mold so I'm going to place it on here and press it down a little bit like a bit of a dam to contain the refractory cement and now it's ready for pouring. This fused silica is so fine grained that it makes a perfect mold material for very fine detail. I'll just vibrate it a bit here to get all the bubbles off the plasticine. Yeah. It doesn't have to be very thick. So I'll basically let this harden and let it cure for four or five days and then strip off the dam and get it ready for baking. Okay, it's time to strip off my dam. And I'll take this off very carefully. There, it's perfect. So I have all the detail of the original fossil. It's nice. That'll make a nice piece of jewelry. Alright, so now I'm going to draw a template on clear plastic using a felt pen. And that's what I'll use to do the cutting of the die crow. There's my cutting template. And I think it's called a trilobite. I'm not exactly sure. Anyways, I have to cut out the dichro piece first and sand it because I need to use it to make an exact copy in clear but about a sixteenth of an inch bigger all around. So first comes the dichro. Anyways, I'll place my clear dichro on top and then I can mark this for cutting. Okay, I've got my dichro piece sanded and now I'm going to draw around it with a felt pen and that should give me my extra eighth of an inch or sorry, sixteenth of an inch. There, so now I'll, I'll cut and sand this piece to the outside of my felt pen line. Okay, so it's baked now. And there's one last thing I want to do before I put the glass on. I'm going to put a little bit of shelf primer on it, but not on the design. The shelf primer will just go up to the edges of the design, like this. Okay. The reason for that is that when I put my die crow down, 
like this. And I put my clear dichro on top. The clear is a little bit bigger all the way around, which is important because I want it to roll over and protect the dichro coating from creeping up the sides. But it also means that there's glass exposed that might actually touch the mold. So the shelf primer will just prevent it from sticking. The dichro won't stick because of the metal coating, but the regular glass might. There, now it's ready for the kiln. Alright, I'll put it in the kiln. These kiln castings like this, and I'm calling this a kiln casting because it actually is, um, they require a good 1400 degrees, sometimes a little bit higher, and a bit of a soaking time as well, to pick up all the small detail. Alright, I've run these up to 1475 and soaked them for about 20 minutes. There's lots of fine detail in that design, so I wanted to make sure I got really good transfer. Alright, they're done. Alright, it's cooled down. Let's have a look. Wow, it's amazing. All that detail got picked up on the die crow. It's a bit off-center, but I guess it makes it look more authentic, like some kind of fossil. Anyways, now it's time to drill a hole in it and get it strung up on a cord. So I have to mark it with a felt pen where I want the hole to be. And for the drilling I use a, a Dremel drill press like this. And I have a little tray of water so that I can drill underwater with these tiny diamond drills. These are the drills I use and they're sold by C.R. Lawrence and they're a diamond plated drill and there's their stock number right there. They're um, around three dollars each and I buy them in uh, quantities of a hundred and I get you know usually I get between fifteen and thirty holes drilled per drill but sometimes I get a bad drill and I only get a few holes and occasionally I'll get a very good drill that seems to go on for fifty or sixty holes all right, so I have these cords that I've made up ahead of time with a barrel clasp on. So I just hook the triangular bale on the cord and slip it onto the back side in one of the holes and pinch it closed onto the hole in the top, like that. And I leave a bit of movement there so it's, uh, it's free to move back and forth, and it's done. Wow, it looks amazing. It's amazing what you can do with a very, very thin image like that fossil. It was such a faint image in that rock, but the dichro reflection just pops it right out. It's amazing. For this example here, I've cut out and sanded one piece of thin clear dichro, and I'm going to position it over top of the image face down leaving a little bit of extra at the top there for the drill hole for the, the pendant. And um, I'm going to make this one very thin. In fact, I'm going to make this one the same thickness as a, a dime. So I'll warn you, this, this making it thin like that might cost 30 cents. So I've got three dimes. I'll place them like that. And then when I put that in the kiln, I'm going to put a, a nice heavy chunk of kiln shelf on top and as it heats up the kiln shelf will press the glass down into the image and spread out until it reaches my dimes and then it, it'll stop pressing. Alright and here's my resulting press firing and uh, as you can see it's as thin as a dime. 
So I'll drill a hole in that and string it up on a silver chain. It's very lightweight and very delicate. There, that's as thin as a dime. Super, super delicate. Wow. So there you go. From fossil to permanent reusable mold to uh, reverse embossed dichroic image. This Fusilica refractory cement is about $60 for a 50 pound sack and uh, it's only like a little more than twice the price of a sack of plaster but it's, it's way more usable. Here's the refractory cement I'm using. This is actually fused silica refractory cement and the main reason I'm using it is it's very fine grain so the granules are very very small and that's good for the detail that I want. It comes in 50 pound bags and it, it does have a, a, a date on it because it does have a shelf life. I actually got this bag for free because it had expired but it, it still works. Alright, before I sign off, I know people are always curious about what other people's studios look like and what they're doing and what their setup looks like. So I'm about to cut these bundles of canes up in a diamond saw to make dishes that look like this. Well, actually, I'll back it up with some white paper. There. Totally amazing. So I've done a series of videos on how to do this sort of thing too, so the information's out there. Alright, thanks for watching. In this particular series I'm covering seven or eight different mold making materials and different ways of transferring patterns from positive to negative and there's lots to go over. So until next time, enjoy!